Saman. I'm David Peterson, and this is The Art of Language Invention. Episode 13, Ad Position Count. The owl is the limit on Tumblr asks, what prepositions are needed? How few, how many can you get away with? Uh, first, to start things off, I guess by preposition, what you really mean is ad position. Uh, in English, we have prepositions as we do in uh, French and Spanish. Um, but uh, ad position is a cover term that means both prepositions that come before the nouns they modify, as well as postpositions that come after the nouns they modify. And every so often you'll see uh, circumpositions. Uh, I've heard uh, rumors of superpositions. Uh, it's kind of like, I don't know, a, a tone thing and even impositions if, if you buy that. Anyway, ad position is a cover term for all of them. So when we talk about things like this, let's use the term ad position. So, how many can you get away with? Uh, well, I guess one way to answer it is to look at natural languages, and uh, talk piscine has two. It has long and belong. They even sound very, very similar, and they come, of course, from the English words long and belong. Uh, it has those two prepositions, so it seems like uh, two is your bottom number. Uh, but uh, this answer uh, takes the question a bit, uh, a bit too simplistically, I think. Uh, what you're really getting at is the content. So it's not the number of prepositions, but how many, or ad positions, but how many ad positional ideas can you get away with? Um, and that question is a little tougher to answer, uh, or uh, a little easier to answer, I guess, because the answer is all of them. You need all of them. But uh, as for how you do that, well, that differs language to language. So let's start with a simple example. Here is my little kitty Roman, and there he is on top of his little cat house. Uh, we call them cat condos in the United States, but let's go ahead and use the word house because that's a simple one. If you wanted to describe where Roman is with respect to this cat condo or cat house, in English, you would say he is on the house. In Spanish, you would say en la casa. In Finnish, you would say talolla. Someone was jealous. Now, bear in mind, we are talking about the picture here. So describing the picture. So it's not as if you're describing some situation that uh, the other person isn't seeing. You're talking about this specific picture and pointing at it and describing how, uh, how that picture works. So that, because uh, I know that there's uh, some uh, context where what I just said in the other two languages other than English can mean something different. And that's uh, really what our next point is. Despite the fact that you have these prepositions and you can use all of these three things interchangeably in these three languages, um, if you start with those expressions, you don't necessarily get to the same end point. Uh, so for example, en la casa in Spanish can mean both the cat is on top of that uh, cat house, but it could also mean the cat is in the middle of the cat house. It can mean both. It just depends on context which one it means. And um, in Finnish, uh, talolla is probably more commonly associated with, if you're talking about a house, meaning uh, at the house, but without any specific uh, notion about whether you're inside of it or, or in front of it, uh, or nearby or near the house. Uh, it can mean all of those things, as well as quite literally on top of the house, though I bet Finnish will probably use a different kind of expression for specifically on top of the house. Um, and even think about English. If you say the cat is on the house, that could mean you know there's a cat on top of the house. It could also mean the cat is free. Um, which is terribly frightening if you uh, go to somebody's house and they say, hey, cat is on the house. It means <laughs> you now own a cat. Like this one, like this one. Look at your belly, kitty. This helps to illustrate what's really going on with at positions and with local cases. It doesn't actually matter how many you have, whether it's as few as two or as many as 50. What am I supposed to do with that? She wants to play. Um, <laughs> what matters is when you have your cases or your ad positions, however many you've got, you decide what their basic senses are 
and then you decide how you're going to cover the grand variety of meanings that exist in language with respect to local positioning and uh, the various other metaphorical uh, positions such as like you know when you say that um, there's no substance in that argument of course there's uh, no physical place that that argument is, and there's nothing that's inside of it. We just use that conventionally. Uh, you'll have to do the same thing with your adpositions or your cases. Also, let me add a confounding factor when it comes to adpositions. There are also uh, things called compound adpositions. Uh, we've got a bunch in English. For example, at the head of, in the face of, at the back of, around the corner from, across the street from, towards the underside of, if you want to think about, say, uh, kids at a park, and you want to describe where this kid is going, you say, oh, he's going towards the underside of the slide. You know, you could say that. Um, these are used to express more precise locations when you need them. Um, but the entire thing, the entire phrase, really, functions as, uh, in English, functions as a preposition. It's just a very, very long preposition with lots of little bitty parts. In fact, sometimes these little bitty parts actually coalesce and the darn thing becomes its own preposition. Like in Spanish, uh, we have the preposition desde, which comes from three Latin prepositions in a row. De, ex, de. And it just all smushed together and became the preposition desde in Spanish. That's uh, honestly the way it works sometimes. So even when you say that your language has X number of adpositions, it may not even have that, main, that many. It may have more than that. It just kind of depends on how you define adposition, where the cutoff is. And honestly, where that cutoff is is pretty arbitrary and probably not super important to you as a language uh, creator probably more important, I don't know, to somebody as a language user. Or maybe somebody trying to sell it, saying like, hey, there's only five prepositions, and uh, also 45 compound prepositions, but really only five prepositions, super easy to learn, or some garbage like that. Anyway, so, um, yeah. So, uh, so again, to answer the thrust of this question, you know, how many adpositions do you need? Well, if you count um, cases, as adpositions, which I think with local cases you probably should, then um, I guess the answer is uh, zero. Wait, no, if you count them as adpositions, then, you know, however many there are. If you don't, then the answer is zero. Um, but uh, the real answer to this question as to how many adpositions do you need, the answer is every single one of them, you need all of them. They're not all going to have their own separate word. Uh, it's going to be the case that some are going to have many, many different senses, and you might have only like, you know, between 5 and 25 words that count as an adposition, but it's going to cover the entire range of meaning if what you're creating is a full language. That's it for this episode. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on the show, Leave a note in the comments or send me an email at djpquery at gmail.com. If you want to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.